Yeah, what's going on? Figure I come back again. I'll talk about this Will Smith uh, Hollywood theatric slap. But before I get into that, let me just say this. I just got a uh, notice. <laughs> this is how funny YouTube is. I don't know why they do these things, but it's like they're trying to intentionally be funny. And I know there's other people who got in the same situation. <clears throat> An account that they closed down that was far more successful than this one and far more successful than my last Alquan account. And it, that was a casualty of those coons taking the other channels down. They just sent me notices saying that the copyright claims on two videos were released good news but yet they took all the fucking videos down <laughs> so what the fuck difference does it make i mean these people are something else it's like they're intentionally playing games it's a pain in the ass that's why it's hard to really go and say what you want to say and do what you want to do so that's what I'm about to go do with the old school viral way. Unedited. And I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Use what I want to use. I'll let you know when that develops. Because, um, you know, you used to plant video. You make your video documentary. Put it on the underground scene. People get it. You spread it that way. Plus other ways nowadays. But. Let's talk about this Will Smith bullshit slap. The thing I can't understand most about it is the fact that there are people out here who are actually thinking that it's real when it's obviously fake. The first time I saw it, I said it's fake. The way he slapped them, that's fake. That's Hollywood theatrics to make sure that the guy doesn't get hurt and it doesn't even look like he really connected. And uh, Chris Rock, as people noted, braced for it and didn't have the typical reaction that a man would have from getting slapped from another man. It's either one of extreme fear or extreme retaliation. And of course, as other people noted, no security, uh, asked him to leave. Then he wins his Oscar, which that part I didn't realize until later on. And I think for the longest time, Will Smith has been trying to win an Oscar because he was the first rapper to win a Grammy. So he wanted to become the first rapper turned actor to win an Oscar. And he may have, but I think Queen Latifah may have gotten one before him. And most deaf, I don't know if he ever won an Oscar or not, but he doesn't really count because he was an actor first. So... I guess if that's the case, he accomplished his mission, which I kind of figured that had to be one of the reasons for the show. Now it gets you to watch and thinking, okay, what else will be next on these type of shows? Thing I hate most is it makes black people look bad. Both of these guys are softies, you know, uh, raising well, well to do families and all that kind of stuff, but they make it look like black people don't know how to act in the midst of a war, this makes news. So black people can't act even at the Oscars. See, the, the thing is, these people, is more Hollywood theatrics and they have to do these things. That's probably part of his initiation to get the uh, Oscar. And, uh, but it makes black people in general look bad. Because believe, like I've been saying, white people are the most impressionable when it comes to brainwashing. Now, this Will Smith shit, the slap shit, see people from the 2000s on, we've already been educated on Hollywood and politics. That's why YouTube has changed their style and taken away those videos. Luckily, I've been able to save some to me, the most important ones to save, whether it's the, I forgot the name of it, 
think I still got that saved. It may have gone down with that hard drive. Uh, or maybe I burned it out on a disc. It was the, uh, I forgot the name of it. The 9-11 one put together by those two Jews. Which, of course, they leave out everything else involving themselves, of course. That one and the Newtown. Damn, I forgot the name of that one, too. Uh, Red Silver J put that out. That, to me, that's the most powerful one. I think it was about three hours, four hours or something like that. Most powerful one to conclusively prove that that was a stunt. And this girl I was seeing at the time when that happened told her to watch it. She didn't want to watch it because she refused to believe or accept that people would lie. But it's funny when the same people who refuse to accept that people will lie about something like that will lie about JFK getting shot in a coup or lie about 9-11, everything, damn thing else you can think of. When it involves people getting killed, they don't think, okay, well, these people do start wars, you know. They did take land. <laughs> I mean, they did enslave people. But you can't believe that they would stage other things that involves killing. But a lot of the stuff they've been staging lately hasn't involved killing. Now, other people ask, the, like Tariq Nashi, I hate to bring him up again, but he's one of the Negroes out here trying to brainwash black people into believing that it's real when black people know that it's fake. They're saying, oh, I believe it was real. See, once you start off with that, I believe it was real and wasn't staged, you're bullshitting right off. We got to ask ourselves, why are they trying to convince us that the shit was real? When it's obviously fake. I mean, come on. I mean, we know some of us have been had the shit slapped out of us at some point in time in our lives. Because I know I have. <laughs> I know damn well that ain't the reaction. Especially if you're supposedly getting embarrassed in front of not only all the people in the theater, but watching TV. I know how I felt. Now, I got to say, I hadn't gotten the shit slapped out of me as an adult, but as a kid and a teen, young teen, I did. And I can tell you what the feeling was right now. The feeling was, first, you're like, because number one, is always somebody bigger than me. That's, that's number one. And it was always females, never a male. That's the one thing I can say. I never got slapped by a male. But my first feeling was, God damn. That shit, that shit stung. <laughs> you know, that, that's my first feeling. Second feeling is, shit, I'm too uh, traumatized to want to fight back. And I damn sure don't want to continue doing what the hell I was doing. And if you're Chris Rock hosting the show, you're not going to be like, damn, well, let me continue. I just got the shit slapped out of me. Uh, now up for the next award. Or, I mean, that's not what you're going to be doing. You're going to be highly embarrassed. And you're going to be like, man, what the, what, I mean, what the fuck? And they would say, take, let's take a break. We'll be right back. But instead it made the air because it was Hollywood theatrics. I keep telling people, I told people in my, my early videos in the brainwashing ones, whenever it's done in front of a camera or a microphone, and especially when people are getting paid, it is 100% bullshit that includes your news anchors telling you the news it's in front of a mic and camera have you ever asked yourself why is somebody telling me the news every day we're so used to people telling us the news that we believe everything that comes on the news in fact this slap has gone on the news has gone everywhere in circles that don't even deal with Hollywood, sports uh, shows and shit like that. Once that started spreading around, I said, there's something beyond this. What that is, maybe we won't know at this time. 
Maybe it's just uh, theatrics to get Will Smith his Oscar. He, he had to go through that. And they say that Jada Pinkett Smith has uh, alopecia. But yet she still has hair. They said alopecia made her hair fall out. Doesn't make your hair go low and get a low cut. That's not what alopecia does. Alopecia is like my man. What was my man from the NBA? Uh, I got his hair. He had the Charlie Vill Villanueva. That's a man with al alopecia. Cynthia G. Alopecia. I ain't trying to call her out like that. But I'm just trying to say these are examples. You, you lose your eyebrows, all of your body hair, underarm hair, pubic hair, everywhere hair is. And you're totally smooth ball everywhere. Your hair doesn't fall out and grow back or your hair doesn't get a low haircut. That's not alopecia. That's what we call Hollywood bullshit. And the people got to learn the difference between Hollywood bullshit. When people are well-known names and shit happens in front of cameras, it is full bullshit at all times. Even the ones who say they disagree, even the ones they say they agree, as long as they're fucking celebrity or somebody's getting paid off of the shit, it's bullshit. People like Tariq Nashi tries to trick you into thinking that he's independent. But the truth is, He's living in the Hollywood area and he's still associated with it and trying to be on that list. But since he can't be down with them, he has done his own thing and grabbed a internet audience. He, I give it to him. He jumped on it fairly early. He's grabbed the YouTube audience, internet audience, and he peddles his products through that audience. Because there is no mainstream audience out there ready for Tariq Nashi. And I bring him up not because he is who he is, but because he's one of the people trying to convince people that the shit was real. And again, why are they trying to convince you that it's real? And why are people even doubting if it's fake? If, I mean, you been on World Star Matter of fact, that's a site I stopped watching too. Part of it is because when the page loads up, the videos don't automatically start playing like they used to. And then you got to go to the comments to get that going too. So you got to reload it again and again. I'm like, man, I'm tired of that. Uh, but you've seen fights, real fights, on World Star. If you haven't experienced that kind of thing in your in your personal life. When people get that fire slapped out of them, the reaction is like I said it was. And for people who had the fire slapped out of them, you know what I'm talking about. For those who haven't, you'll think that this shit is real. Now, I haven't had fire slapped out of me by a man, but I would imagine from looking at fights and uh, MMA shit that Will Smith is a lot bigger then Chris Rock, and since he had that Ali role, he put on some muscles. So if he really slapped the shit out of Chris Rock, Chris Rock would have gone down. Then security would have came. But when you don't see security, that, that, should, that should be a red flag that is more Hollywood bullshit. Because if anybody not Will Smith that would have gone up there and, and slapped the shit out of Chris Rock, Security would have jumped on him. Police would have jumped on him. I'm sure they got police in the place. How come Will Smith wasn't taken out by handcuffs? Because it was Hollywood. That's why. It's the same reason why, in most cases, you know, that Detroit, Indiana is an exception. When athletes get into fights, the police don't take them off into handcuffs. Even though technically that's a goddamn assault and battery. But those cops are paid by the league to uh, do what they do. And for the most part, they're not supposed to uh, touch the uh, prime entertainers. Now, if you look at some sports, they have the cop try to escort. Like when the uh, player, NBA player gets kicked out. They don't usually touch the NFL player, but if an NBA player gets kicked out, you have a cop who I think is probably doing too much. 
will try to put his arm around the player and escort him out and point in that direction. You got to get over here. That's not that cop's job. That's the NBA's job. But the cops want to get involved. Act like they're doing something. Act like, act like they're a part of the shit. It's not their job. If I'm an NBA player, you know, I don't want no cops. I'm on the job getting paid, doing my job. I don't want no cops putting hands on me. I don't want no cops trying to direct me to do shit. Is this prison ball or is this a professional situation I'm playing in? That Detroit thing, that was in effect a mini riot. So, you know, that's a situa different situation. That's when it's time for the cops to come in. But even then, they should have been protecting the talent instead of the uh, perpetrators. And that documentary about that, that shit was corny anyway, by the way. But it keeps shocking me how long ago that shit was and the fact that they tore that shit down. Which is crazy. But, um... So, yeah, man, this shit was fake. Uh... I guess after a while, we'll figure out why it happened. Maybe it has something to do with who you won the Oscar for portraying. And Will Smith is a bad actor. I don't give a damn what nobody says. People call him a great actor and shit. For years, Will, matter of fact, not for years, even up until today, Will Smith keeps playing Will Smith on screen. He has three modes. I do not like this. You are out of control. That Will Smith mode. Then he has the, well, what's your name, girl? <laughs> that mode. Then he has the comedy mode, which I think is better suited for him. But he wants to become a real actor, so to speak. And his movies have been, it was the last... His movies haven't really been doing well since that, uh, damn, I forgot the name of the damn movie. Damn, what was the name of the movie he played the goddamn superhero with the, the drunken, lazy superhero? You know what I'm talking about. Which was another stereotype of black people, by the way. That's the thing, these Negroes don't choose their roles carefully because they, they just think about themselves, they don't think, Man, if I do this, I'm making black people look bad. That's what Chris Rock and Will Smith have done. And we know Chris Rock is a coon. Now, I met his brother. Uh, and I got pictures of that. I know you're going to say, well, you ain't show yourself. Maybe one day I just might. Maybe one day. He was cool. Like I told you, I met a few celebrities. Some of them I didn't even know who the hell they were. Because, you know, I don't watch some of the shows, but I took pictures any damn way just in case somebody else might know them or in case they blow up bigger. <laughs> and then I could say, hey, I, I was with them, you know. But, you know, it is what it is as far as that goes. Um, what is this? White people, funny. I'm in my car doing my thing. They come around getting in their car first. They check the other door and make sure it's locked before getting in. I'm like, what the? These white people, funny. That's another thing, too, about this whole situation, man. I noticed that you got a supposed war going on. I know people are going to say suppose it, but it's just strange. It's a strange situation. The news on the war is days late all the time, and we get repetitive information. Matter of fact, CNN, man, I don't even watch the channel, but just looking at the website, it's pretty weird, man. It's like, uh, not just on that war, it's just like all the fucking news. It seems kind of tabloidish, spamish type of website. The news is constantly old, and I mean, it's just weird. It doesn't seem serious anymore. A lot of spam on the website. Very weird. But then you got this Will Smith. Yeah, I didn't even know nobody was in that motherfucking car. God damn. But then you got the Will Smith situation blowing up. 
And then it got me into thinking. It seems like whenever something goes down, black people must always be front and center. Which I'm still trying to figure this shit out. Because I know whatever is going on, it has to do with us. All the changes in the world. That's including what's going on with the small hats. Because like I said before, too many of them look black. Which is very suspicious. And I never forget what they used to say that we're the black man's best friend. And then you combine that with the fact that they're supposed to be small hats. But yet all their symbolism, whether it's Hollywood, sports, you see the Oscars, the, the pyramids. You see obelisks, pyramids, the eye. And you see the pyramid thing almost everywhere. And it's always the three pyramids, by the way. Just look at logos. And and pyramid, three pyramids, that includes mountain logos too. It's ancient Egyptian symbolism, which shouldn't be the case for so-called small hats. You know what I mean? There's no Hebrew symbolism out there. It's Egypt everywhere. It's like that's the badge that you must have in order to get down. Even like I said, with Asian businesses and products, you need that. If it's what I think it is, then I got to say it's fascinating. But how long is it going to take before they get it together? That's what I want to know. And how long are we going to keep being the ones suffering before we can actually get on the good foot? That's what I want to know. But this slap. This is a slap in the face for us because all it does is make us look bad while these people get paid. Because like I said, you know, white people, they always think the worst of us. The worst first. And hardly any good. Now, Will Smith, you know, he was known as being and Chris Rock for that matter. Known for being wholesome, geeky, soft guys. Now, all of a sudden, they want to make Will Smith look hard. My guess might be, I didn't check it out, but maybe he has some type of uh, movie coming up where he's playing somebody that's supposed to be hardcore. Changing his image up, I guess. I don't know. I'm guessing that's what it must be. But I can say this, I don't like it. The shit is fake. And I leave you with this, man. We got to understand that Hollywood, it's all fake. Take away cameras, take away the mic. You don't have all the craziness that you have. That's why, like I, I've been telling people this for years. When you see an article either online or anywhere and it says, uh, look at the dress that Kim Kardashian is wearing today or such and such females looking stunning in this dress or look at my man from Judas and the Black Messiah wearing stockings. All that is set up theatrics because then you got to ask yourself who took the picture and why did they spread the picture and why did he allow himself to be taken a picture of in that way? That's what I always ask myself. How did this get out here? Just like when you see certain videos on World Star, some of them are fake, some of them are real. A lot of them is real as propaganda. It's all a part of the machine. And they seem to be targeting black people for the most part. And I keep asking myself, okay, how did this get out here? Why? What's the point of this? Who was filming this? And why? Just ask yourself the simple questions, you know, so, but we're the primary target and coon agents who are paid, by the way, 
They are part of the control group for the white man. That's why I keep pointing out Tariq Nashi because he has great influence to the weak minded. He's always selling you something. He's always trying to brainwash you. You got to listen. To, people like him, you got to listen to everything that they say. And then he'll say one or two percent of shit that is his main objective, which is to work for the white man. Because he wants to convince you that the slap was real. He keeps saying things like somebody is a democratic shill and you shouldn't even vote. Don't even bother voting. Just to make sure. Now, if that don't sound like some shit <laughs> that's working for the white man, I don't know what is. See, me, I never said don't vote. I said, if you, I said voting is a waste because they already selected who they selected. I said, if you're going to vote, vote third party to send a message. But now, since they got these coons out here trying to tell people how to vote, I say vote however you want to vote now. When you keep hearing the same group, him, the so-called black authority and the so-called professor black truth, which I believe are one in the same, just like everybody else says, I believe the professor black truth uh, voice is sped up a little and the black authorities voice is sped, uh, uh, slowed down a little. And right in the middle is the real voice because they got the same cadence, the same uh, vocabulary. And them and Tariq Nasheed, uh, I gotta listen to that Tariq Nasheed and the Black Authority there. I gotta see that again. Listen for the clues of possible manipulation and separation or whatever on the voices. But they all use the same terms and they use the strange same strategies to try to brainwash. You know, it's always about Democrats stop being uh, down with Democrats. Now, not too long ago, during the Barack Obama years, that, that's how not too long ago we're talking. Black people didn't want to be down with them, uh, Republicans. And to be a black conservative meant being an Uncle Tom house nigger. Now, all of a sudden... What the Republicans or the so-called conservatives have done is they shoved a few dollars into House Negroes' pockets, having them pose as pro-black people while spewing conservative propaganda to black people under the guise of being pro-black and, you know, using the word nigga trying to appeal to the street crowd. But a lot of these people you can see right through them. But they help their coons out because they need them to brainwash, <coughs> excuse me, brainwash the black people. No, I didn't catch any Corona. <laughs> it's the, uh, fucking, like I was saying in the other video, the abrupt temperature change. God damn. I know the, uh, allergies are coming on, but then Went right back to winter the next day. Shit. Got that winter feel now. My like, god damn. We're almost at April, man. Keep that shit steady. Shit. Then I'm gonna change my oil. You goddamn right, I'm changing my own oil. Motherfucker, I asked for the oil price on this car. They said 80 fucking dollars. I said, man, these people gotta be out of their fucking mind. For full synthetic. You can go and get you a bottle of full synthetic, what is it, six quarts. If you like me, you want to wait till it's $20. <laughs> my, my personal preference and brand is Quaker State because it's smooth. Valvoline, which I liked, and Castrol. Pennzoil, that's the one. I never tried the mobile, but I'm sure that's good. Pennzoil is kind of got a different feel to it for some odd reason. But get that, get your $10 air filter or one of those air filters where you can use it up to 50,000 miles. You know, when it's time to change it, just, you know, make sure you drain the air filter out 
of the oil in that part of the uh, thing. Put it back on. Shit, once you get your car lifted, I mean, the hardest part, you know, is making sure that, you know, you, you know, you prepare the area to make sure that you don't make a mess. Once that's done, once the oil is out, you're good to go. I mean, you do your own oil. That way you can make sure that you're getting top quality, full synthetic oil. And none of that synthetic blend. None of that kind of bullshit. Shouldn't have to pay no goddamn $80 for a fucking oil change. But see, they try to see. Let me tell you a place I was uh, I was working at. I learned a whole lot about shit. That they try to up sell people on shit. If you have a luxury class car, Benz, all that kind of shit. BMW. They try to charge you a whole lot more for brakes. They said, oh, well, you know, the brakes are more advanced, which they are. But changing the brake pads is still no different than if you change this shit on a fucking Toyota. The brake mechanism might be more advanced, but it's the same work. And most of the pads are the same pads. Now, the rotors, that's a different story. The rotors are going to be more expensive because they are actually different rotors, different style. But that's what they do. Oil is the same oil. A lot of times the uh, oil filter is the same type of oil filter. But they want to charge you two and three times what it costs on a regular car because they figure, well, if you spent this money on this car, then spending more on your service that'll make you feel like you uh got a good deal you you know you uh taking care of your car i'll be damn I, man i changed rotors brake pads oil spark plugs all that shit you could do on your own that ain't nothing even change the uh fucking brake fluid all that shit all that shit is what is known as a tune-up <laughs> the main part of the tune-up it's changing the goddamn spark plugs. You, I haven't even priced the, that shit on this car. I ain't even gonna try because I already know they're trying to charge eighty dollars for oil, oil change. I already know what they want to charge for a tune-up. <laughs> but you just go to a uh, place like Rock Auto, get the parts for spark plug changes. You just need the spark plug wrench. Simple as hell. That's if your car has a certain amount of mileage on it. Usually, most cars, you don't need to change it to around 100,000 miles on it. And after a while, you'll feel the sluggishness, which knows, lets you know that the spark plug is misfiring or, you know, it's just it's, it's time to change that shit. Because when you try to accelerate, whether it's on the freeway or what have you, and you're like, damn, your car ain't really moving like that. And you know that when you got your oil changed too and it's not moving like that. That's when it's time to put those new spark plugs in. And once you put the new spark plugs in, you see that your shit is responsive and back to being quick. So I'm saying you could do, you could save yourself a ton of money by doing shit yourself. I know a lot of people, the biggest impediment to doing it is... Man, uh, how do I lift up the car? You know, you can buy you a jack. Buy you a, a jack. Uh, uh, you might want to get you some hydraulic fluid after a while. If the jack doesn't work, that's what you get. Hydraulic fluid. Don't throw the shit out like I did the first time I did it. Because I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know they sold that shit. Or I would have kept that shit. Uh, <laughs> and uh, get you some jacks. And I would suggest... I don't have it now, but I'm about to get a breaker bar. And I'll save you a lot of fucking energy removing the wheels <laughs> and get you some gloves. Working gloves. That, that's what I always recommend to wear gloves. I'm going to get a breaker bar because that way you don't have to extend as much energy. Taking the goddamn wheels off, which was my goddamn mistake 
for the last few years. <laughs> Take so much energy putting the shit, the, the lug nuts on, on, off and on. You get tired after each fucking wheel and then you're like, oh, man, that's that's one of the parts you like, man, I don't even feel like doing. But you get the breaking bar, it won't do nothing for you. know, You get a lot of leverage off of that. So to break the shit off with ease. You know, changing the rotors, that's probably the hardest thing for a lot of people. Because a lot of people get scared, like, oh, shit, I don't want to take the whole piece of the wheel and everything, the whole brake uh, assembly off. I don't know, I'm scared. <laughs> but I can tell you this, it ain't nothing. Use common sense and research it. Got to do it for your vehicle model because everyone might be different. But you also got to get some of that, I think it's called Loctite. It's blue. Get the blue kind. You can get the red kind, but the blue kind is for stuff that's going to come back off. I think there's a red one, and I think there's a purple kind. I forgot which one. I think the red is the highest, I think, for stuff that ain't coming off anytime soon. And that's basically for any bolt that is upside down, side to side, because, you know, every time you move, your car is moving. And... um. You know, they can work their way out, believe it or not. Because I did that one time and I didn't put the Loctite on it, even though I had it on there. But I was just so fucking frustrated with how long it took me to get the shit out. So I just said, fuck it. Got the shit back on, fuck it. Then something happened. I forgot what it was. I was riding it for a couple of weeks. I had to do something. So I said, well, since I got to do that, I might as well look at the bolts and see what's happening. Then I saw that some were working their way back out kind that was uh, upside down and I said yeah now I see you gotta get that shit so you gotta get that even when you look on a laptop when you take that shit apart you'll see that it has the, 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 the screws have the blue uh, stuff on it that's that lock tight shit on it to keep the screws from coming out because you know laptops are being moved moved around constantly and the screws are upside down so that makes them stay in place so you got to have that in order to change your uh, rotors because the uh, brake mechanism. Actually, when you do the research, and you, if you're like me, you pay special attention to detail. You take your time to get it right so you get it right the first time. You'll find that you end up doing a better job than the people at the shops, you know, because they, you know, it's not their car. So they don't really give a fuck like that. Sometimes they got to keep moving shit out, moving it out quick. And believe me, they will make mistakes. Sometimes they'll put on the wrong tires. They'll forget to do something. Forget to tighten up the lug nuts. That shit happens. Might happen with you too. <laughs> but it's better to do your own shit. That way you can get whatever parts you want on them. And the quality of parts that you want. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to change my own oil. That way you don't have to worry about people charging you for full synthetic and giving you conventional. And the charges for full synthetic oil are fucking ridiculous anyway because when you actually look at the prices of the oil you buy on your own, which is usually better than what they're going to be giving you at the shop, might be a five dollar difference now i'm talking if you get the five quart six quart thing probably five dollar difference in price i mean that ain't enough to go from a 20 to a 30 dollar oil change to a 60 dollar oil change just because it's full synthetic at a dealership or something like that that's crazy insane so uh, i know that i really went off topic on that <laughs> but um I'll just say, we got to understand, shit is fake. It's going to continue to be fake. These guys, I think I was leaving it off with the Republican uh, coon agents that they hired. Listen to them. You got even black people. Some of them are agents. Some of them just brainwashed people. Like I told you, a lot of the brainwashed, they just like to get in on the action. Just like they say, you could tell Tariq Nasheed's effectiveness, he started the FBA shit then you got people talking about I'm the king of the FBA 
Now he changed it to maroon, so I guess he's gonna have to be king of the maroon now. That's that goes to show that his brainwashing is working. Unless you know these people are agents, period. So that is the same thing that's happening with this Republican thing. You see black people repeating things. Oh, they're, they're working for the Democrats. This Democrat stuff, Democrat that. When you hear people talk that talk, ask yourself who are the primary beneficiaries of that kind of talk. These coon agents will say, it's you. Oh, yeah. Most of my life, they've been saying Republicans are evil. They're racist and they still are. But black people don't really care because they supposedly voted for Biden and he was proven to be a master racist. And these agents still tell the myth today that Donald Trump was racist. I grew up watching Donald Trump on TV. I don't recall ever hearing anything racist from Donald Trump. I'm just being honest with you. Ever. People on park uh, point to that Central Park Five. Or six, whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> um, like I said, I was growing up, I was watching that shit. And it seemed like they were guilty to me. Because they confessed. And I remember seeing the video with the confession. And their animated uh, confession. I was like, looked like they did it. But I was also asking myself, why would six, five, six people take turns raping one woman? I shouldn't even said that word. <laughs> you know how YouTube is. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they'll uh, bleep it out. Um, I said, that's nasty, number one. And number two, why would you want to do that in front of people? Now, you've seen that in movies. What was that movie I saw? I don't know. I forgot. Tyron knows one of those movies. I was watching those wild ass Hades movies where they do that kind of shit. <laughs> and um, I said, that doesn't seem right. Random woman in a park. And then all along, see, the black man got the blame. Then all along, it was the fucking Latino. And of course, he hardly got as much publicity. For his truly evil deeds. Than these other people got. Now. I don't want to get into. Real crimes. Real victims. Being set up for. Other reasons. I mean because that. Shit is possible. We got the Lee Harvey Oswald as an example. But. You know a lot of these things are strange. That's all I can say. <laughs> a lot of these things are strange. But. Just watch out for these coons. I mean, all I can do is try to relay the information because that's what I've been trying to do. Trying to tell you how to look past the coon propaganda and to get to the heart of what they're really working for and what their real goal is. And why they keep calling you niggas all the time. Because they are taking on the minds of their masters. I noticed that Tariq Nasheed has been calming down on calling people niggas. Because I told you he's listening. I know a lot of you don't believe it, but he is listening. Man, been taking shit from me, but I ain't going to go into that again because that pisses me off. All I ask for a fucking mention, that's all Tariq Nasheed. But, of course, you got to act like it came from you. But it is what it is. But, um... You know, these guys... He stopped calling people niggas, even that pan-Africanism strikes back. I addressed him on the situation. He calmed it down. He doesn't call us as many niggas, but apparently that is a part of the scheme to call us niggas. And it's twofold because they want to seem like they're street hood and cool. And that's how they got to communicate with, with niggas. And they really feel that you are niggas beneath them. Just like Coon, Uncle Tom's. You know, they always say there's a, there's niggas, then there's black people. No. They're not niggers and black people. There are niggers. Straight. Like I keep telling you. When it was slavery time, there was no, that's a nigger. 
that's a black person. I'm gonna enslave the nigger. I'm not gonna enslave the black person. They didn't do that. They enslaved all niggers. That's what they did. In essence, the black man, after taking after his white master, wants you to believe that a nigger is essentially an out of control, wild black man. In, in other words, not under the white man's control. That's what wild and out of control means. That's why you, when you see Uncle Tom's, you hear Uncle Tom's, they're not black people per se because they don't have their own minds. They try to dress like the white man, talk like the white man, talk about things that are unique to the white man, and they don't want to be black. I bet you these people even go tanning. And I'm sure a lot of us have, have gone to the beach some point in our lives, and, and, and we, whoever we went to the beach with, whether they were black or Puerto Rican, talking about, yeah, I'm going to go get a tan. I used to hear that shit and I used to say to myself, motherfucker, what more of a tan do you need? I mean, what the fuck? You're already darker than I am. I mean, what the fuck kind of tan are you looking to get? <laughs> but that's that white talk. I'm getting a tan. Crazy. That's Uncle Tomism. You can't be yourself. You got to blend in and be the white man's nigga under his control. See, Asians, they choose to do that, to trick the white man. I'm going to get into that in another video. But before I go, let me say something else. Speaking of coons, I was reading some article about some Puerto Rican guy talking about uh, he wants to go fight in uh, Ukraine. And they, according to the article... Guess he's over there right now. He said he, he didn't like the aggression on Russia. He wanted to sign up the fight. I'm like, where do they get the word that they can sign up? How do they go there? And are they getting paid? And why would you want to go get killed for somebody else's war? It's a guy, Vasquez is his name, Puerto Rican. I'm sure he got a white wife. He said he asked his wife, uh, honey, can I go over there? And she said, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, damn, his honey must have been thinking, shit, get your ass over there, then you get killed, I get the insurance, I can go get me a new house. Story, you know, again, in media, you just never know when you're hearing propaganda or not, but, but knowing these uh, Hispanics, he's probably thinking to himself, man, I can go over here, fight for the Ukraine, and convince these people that I'm a uh, European, like them. I could realize my whiteness. <laughs> Speaking of, I was watching the video. I'm gonna let it go after this. What they call these auditors? I've been watching these auditing videos, man. Some shit is exciting, some is not. You know, it's weird when some people are Mexican talking about I'm fighting for my rights, homie. Or you see some people not even from this country talking about their rights and shit. They're constitutionalists. I'm like, man, you ain't even from this motherfucking country. You that fucking uh, uh, patriotic. How can you left your own country? <laughs> you don't give a fuck about that. You could tell some of these white guys looking around like, man, the fuck you talking about you fighting for the Constitution. You ain't even from this country. But one thing I see over and over again, the smaller the town, the more authoritative, authoritative, authoritative the uh, uh, city is and the cops are. And you put it all together, that means they probably got something to hide the more hostile they become. But it's clear that they all say, try to get your ID, try to make you fear them. If you listen to the police's language carefully, they know that there's laws that they can't break, but they say it in a way to get you to volunteer and surrender your rights. And they're all apparently trained that way because the small towns, big cities say the same thing. So apparently that's a part of the, the scheme. Anyway, this guy 
Californian Mexican guy approached uh, some business. Then he started spraying them with a water hose and calling them niggas. Then towards the middle of the video, the guy's like, he ain't saying in front of the cop, white cop, of course, but he was like, he's being racist. He's like, uh, I'm, do I, I don't look black. Do I look black? Why is he calling me a nigger? I'm thinking to myself, motherfucker, you do look black, actually. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, this goes to show how delusional these motherfuckers are. He had his hair cut low and he had a beard. But facial features wise, skin color wise, he actually really did look black. black. So, but that doesn't excuse that white man's uh, language, but and talking about killing people and shit. But again, this, this is another thing. See, he's trying to say, oh man, if the white man would have known I was Mexican, he wouldn't have called me a nigga. He probably would have called me uh, some other shit, wetback or some shit, beaner or some shit. <laughs> I guess that's supposed to make shit better, huh? Oh, the white man called me something I'm not. But as we've proven on this show many times, <laughs> when you're dark and you're a Mexican, goddammit, if the man mistook you for a nigger, he didn't make a mistake. <laughs> He didn't make a mistake. I told you that's why uh, Hispanics always got to make sure that they say their Spanish name and start speaking Spanish to make sure that you don't see them as a run of the mill nigger. They do that all the time. Maybe that motherfucker might, I think his hair is going, but maybe he might start growing his hair out now. So, so you won't get mistaken for a nigger next time. <laughs> But that just goes to show how that is. That's why I tell the Israelites, man, those fucking Hispanics, stop trying to wrap them up into your world, man. They want to be white. They don't want to be no goddamn Hebrew. And they don't want to be black, even if they look like Wesley Snipes or Minute Bowl. So we got to stop that. Now, it's all right to point out that they're black. But a lot of times when you do that, people are like, why do you keep trying to make people black? Nobody's trying to make anybody black. If they are, they are. I'm not trying to invite them to the group. That's what Pan Africans claim they want to do, but they don't even—they stay away from the Hispanic, though. Matter of fact, I'm gonna leave you with this, and I keep saying it's the Jamaican, the leader of this anti-black, black spy ring that the UK put together. They're the main problem. Keep them out of your world. We'll do better between Jamaican and other British Caribbeans and our Uncle Tom house nigga sellouts and Freemason types. This is why we as a group can't get anywhere because I've analyzed the facts. And again, it's not the African, the Africans that Johnny come lately's trying to get involved with all the talks that's been happening with Tariq Nasheed and shit. My advice to the African Keep doing what you were doing, which was not being involved with us. <laughs> That'll be better off for you. Help yourself to isolate the Jamaican. Because like I said, even in the UK, the Jamaicans are giving the Africans problems. Try to do the same shit to the Africans out there that they're doing to us. All in our business trying to lead the way, trying to tell us how to think. All types of shit. Stand on your own. That's why I say to the Jamaican, when you demonstrate to me that you're trying to set your other fellow Caribbean Hispanics into the African world, then you can get back to me. But so far, you're leaving them alone and you're right on to us because Marcus Garvey could have gone to Cuba, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic and got that shit jump started. But see, they, they want to make sure that they don't go to a place where they won't have influence and where they might get killed even though he could have gotten his ass killed here but since he was a Freemason he got off the hook I want to see you deal with these goddamn Hispanics force them to be African but see now like I said in the last video it's funny how the Jamaican is now saying we never were African. We never said we were African. 
Then you got a man on my channel trying to say, oh, no, that was the rosters. They were the ones uh, kicking that African shit. Well, Marcus Garvey came before the Rastafarians. And he was kicking that African shit. So you can't blame him on, on the rosters. If anything, the rosters got that shit from Marcus Garvey. So again, why are they changing their fucking tune? Because we've changed our tune. We're abandoning Africa. And again, I thank you to the Tariq Nasheed and his other disciples, the Black Authority and the Mouthy Megan and these other people for spreading the word on my behalf. Even though you motherfuckers didn't want to mention my name, act like I don't exist. But I thank you for spreading the word because it opened eyes. But I really need you to start spreading the word on the goddamn Jamaican. That's the main thing. And when you're not, that must mean somebody must be a goddamn Jamaican. Because it's, it's less likely that one of you motherfuckers is going to be African. But it's more likely that you're going to be a goddamn Jamaican. And you don't want that smoke coming to the Jamaican. But that's the primary enemy. I have analyzed the facts within my personal life. And I've examined the data out there. You even hear Tariq Nasheed talking about uh, Caribbean crime being added with us. Who has been saying that for years? Even when I, even recently when I did the Alpo, and this is before Tariq, Tariq uh, even talked about it, I, I made the video about the Caribbean crime with Alpo and being labeled as our crime. They didn't call out. Al, you notice they don't call Alpo a Latino drug dealer have you ever noticed that shit but that's what he was but they don't call him that they just say fuck it we'll let people assume black but that's your pan-africanism right there that's that's the way you want it a man named martinez being one with his blackness and killing niggas right <laughs> that's pan-africanism for you I'll tell you. I just don't like these Jamaicans. See, I, I told you they're agents. Because there's no reason that they should be switching up their tune so drastically. All of a sudden now, we would never were African. When did we say we were African? That's what they're telling me. Motherfucker, my entire life. That's all I ever heard. Matter of fact, even... you. With Jamaicans, you never hear them talk about the Chinese, the Indian, the Lebanese, the white. You got to find that on your own. <laughs> I mean, they never talk about it. But people like me, I would bring it up because that's the realities of Jamaica. The realities that the Pan-Africans, who are the Jamaicans, don't want you to know about. That's why I would bring the shit up. Because that's the real deal. That's Jamaica. And they consider them all to be equally Jamaican. They don't hate the white man. I've been trying to tell people this for years. They love the white man. They say East Indians aren't black, but yet a lot of Jamaicans got East Indian. Look it up. A lot of East Indian uh Jamaican celebrities, uh, you want to say mixed in with the African style, whatever you want to call it. But as you can see, they don't look mixed because black is black. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. So now all of a sudden, they want to switch up the tune. They always said, we're Africa, we're the same people. That's, the, that's their line. We got dropped off the same boat at different destinations. And we all came from Africa. That's their line. How come they want to change the script now? Because they need a, an excuse to stay to us. Stick with us. Because they're coon agents. That's why. If they maintain that they're African. And we're not. Now. There's a separation. Now. People are doing like I always suggested that we stay away from them. When I say stay away, I mean we really gotta not communicate. Just like you wouldn't want anybody in your business. You're not gonna let me see your bank account and your health records and shit. Just like 
You keep people away from that kind of stuff. You keep them away from anything just to be on the safe side. They got to stick with us for a reason. They're clearly acting in the capacity of agents and watchdogs. Because there should be no reason that they switch up now their fucking identity. The people, UK, Jamaicans are doing the same thing. If you notice, whether they're Jamaican, Jamaicans, or Jamaican descendants in the UK, or recent Jamaican immigrants in the UK, I keep telling you, now I'm going to really leave you with this. I keep telling you, whenever they're on one of our lives, as you know, from East Coast to West Coast, you got three hour differences in time, up to three hours. East Coast, I think London is around eight, seven, eight hours ahead, nine hours or some shit like that. So, it's five o'clock right now. So out there, what is it? Probably around one o'clock in the morning. So imagine if a show starts at nine o'clock Eastern time. Imagine where these people got to wake up very early in the morning to get in on one of our shows. And that's, and we don't even want to go and think about West Coast time. Because now you're dealing with another three hours you got to deal with. That is how strongly that these people in the fucking UK will wake up. They should be going to work. <laughs> that's what they, provided they do the same type of shit we do, they should be going to work. But instead, they're up fucking early in the morning listening to us and trying to get in our business. Shit, they ain't got nothing to do with them, no way, no how. Whether it's Umar Johnson shit, whether it's uh, uh, whatever's going on in this country, they come on talking about, hi, I want to call and, and, and say what we've got to do as a people and all that kind of bullshit. Talking like we live next door. We're not your motherfucking cousins. Again, the white man, the Anglo, that's his people. They're the brothers. You have nothing to do with us because you're not our people. We're not from the fucking UK. You are. And if you're from Jamaica directly, you've been dominated. You black people in the UK are European. And there's no getting around that. So let's stop the bullshit. That's why I, what I've been trying to preach for years. Because I've been thinking about this every time. I mean, for I mean, at least 10 years. These people will always call up on our forums. And I would always say to myself. And, and the reason I was familiar with the time differences. Because back in the day. I used to play. I don't need, well, I'll say it. I used to buy video games internationally. So. I knew the time differences because I had to place the calls at a certain time in order to get the uh, make sure that the shop was open because there was some video games I just couldn't get. So you know that's how that worked. That's why I knew the time differences. So that's why I know that these people get up very fucking. Early, I used to go to the uh, store, the newsstand, and buy uh, those video game magazines from like Europe, the UK, and Japan and shit. They would they would sell that kind of shit. Then you can see what they got over there. Of course, you can go online now, but you gotta know where to look. But that's how I had to do it, and I would do that. Get me some exclusives. But now it doesn't matter too much anymore because they used to have censored video games and shit, you know? Some games wouldn't come out here. And some that were out here, they would be censored. So I wanted, I wanted the, the shit raw. So that's how I know when these when you hear these British people coming on our forums and black people, they got to say, okay, this, this has nothing to do with you. I'll cut you off. 
Goodbye. They got to start doing that. But for some odd reason, they don't want to do it, especially if those people are giving them money. That's why a lot of them are smart enough to hand, slide them some, some cash because they know money talks. You slide them some money, they're going to be like, okay, this person can talk. That's how it works. But you got to leave those British alone. They have nothing to do with us. We did not come from the United Kingdom. I know some people might say some of us may have, but hey, the, 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 the story is convincing because like I said, there, there's a strong, very, very strong, important emphasis on black Americans to the point that you know there's something else behind their nonstop interest in us. So, we got to leave the Jamaicans, anybody associated with the UK, we got to leave them alone. The fact that they're now trying to claim that they're indigenous should tell you right now that they are following us and they must stay close. I told you what agents have to do. You've seen shows about agents, whether they're uh, undercover uh DEA agents, cops, or whatever are going for the mob or drug dealers or skinhead groups. When shit is thrown off, they got to find a way to stick with it and gain the trust of whoever they're trying to infiltrate and find a reason to stay attached to them. You can't just, if they find nothing, they hear nothing. They don't just say, oh, well, I guess we got to give up. That's not the goal because they already suspect that something is there. So now they, they keep looking for you to fuck up. So they can get the information that they're looking for. And I've seen some shows, some, some people suspected that they had a cop in their midst. And they kept quiet for months and months and months until somebody slipped up and got lazy. Matter of fact, it was, uh, I think it was Florida. Matter of fact, I think it was that one I told you about those El Rukins. Because they were so clever, they even made up their own cold language. But then they slipped up. And they uh, accidentally uh, provided the uh, FBI with the uh, decipherment of the code. That's why you got to know when to shut the fuck up. But they were good at shutting up for the longest time, though. They couldn't be penetrated for a while. That's why you got to make sure you excommunicate these goddamn Jamaicans. And those British, especially those British too, because they really don't have nothing to do with nothing that's going on here. And they, they always try to say, oh, well, we're doing the same, we're experiencing the same thing. Why don't you worry about what's going on in the United Kingdom or in the rest of Europe? Those people might uh, be experiencing the same thing that you're experiencing. How about that? fuck you worried about us for most of these motherfuckers never even been to this country and most of us are not even going out there so why are they worrying about us why do they keep trying to act like there's a connection with us there is no goddamn connection god damn it matter of fact i'm pissed off that's enough